In reference to me and the oil industry, as I stated earlier, a white man, my mentor in BP, opened the door for me. But once it was open, I had to prove that I belonged there. And I did. Believe me, it was an obstacle course from day one, but it was still a privilege. And that's what you have to do once you are given the opportunity. And I mentioned, I said Michelin Tire, but it's actually Michelin North America. They came looking for Donlin because we were in the federal bank of businesses who were capable of operating at a level that could supply them with this number six heating oil. So that's how that all came to came about. And another thing in building the business, I am a solution person. I mean, as I said somewhere, I see the glass half full. Now, granted, sometimes that's worked against me and I probably should see it half empty, but I just don't see it that way. So even in the end, when we were having problems transporting with the truck, I had started looking into the rail uh, cars, delivering it, but that was going to take time. And as I said, BP were closing in just like a butterfly closes its feathers or wings or whatever. So I didn't have the time. But um, one of the things, given credit where credit is due, the reason I was able to even bid at that level was because during the Clinton administration, the federal job bank was computerized. So you could find things on the internet. Prior to that, you had to know somebody in the government to even be able to get in the door to get the work. So that's how I was able to find what was available, the contracts, uh, previous bids, etc. And of course, honestly, When I started to look through that process again later during the Bush era, a lot of that was so scrambled. You had trouble finding it, and the people that had worked there prior, uh, naturally, I guess, change of administration during the Clinton time was no longer there. And I remember trying to call someone and that you could never almost get through. And I asked the poor guy, well, how many of you are working? You know, how many calls are you taking a day? And he says, well, sometimes it's only two of us and we have like three or 400 calls a day, which was impossible for them to get through. Whether that department was privatized, I do not know, but it was totally different. It was very difficult to, uh, to get to speak to anyone. But during the Clinton time, when it was computerized, that's how I got through in case anyone wants to know that. And the other thing, if you click on the link that says history under this recording, you will see part of the obstacle course. You will see all of the paperwork that I had to supply. At one point in time, I thought I should apologize to the trees because everything was paper in every certificate, uh, state, federal, whatever they asked me for, I had to give it to them. And I mean, it was a pile of paper because you had to prove that you were a minority. You had to prove that you didn't have a sugar daddy, a white sugar daddy uh, supporting you or backing you, that you were not a pretend company because there was a lot of that. But I just wanted to make that clear that, believe me, we did the work. And when they ask you for paper and what they tell you to do, you must do it. Now, the the expectation was when I said it was accidental, I wasn't supposed to get that far, is because I was supposed to fire myself with all of the stop gates and with all of the obstacle class, you're not expected to pass, you're expected to fall and fire yourself somewhere down the road. And I did not do that. So when I did not do that, then BP had to raise the bar and raise the bar. So it would look like I was firing myself when in essence, I was not. And that's part of what I call that coop where a, uh, uh, there's this uh, plan control achieved control is put in motion and it looks like nobody touched it when all they have to do is to sit back and watch because if they do ABC, XYZ is going to follow to be continued.